Hi everyone and welcome to lesson four. Um, we're going to talk about dodge, burn, uh, just making highlights and shadows, playing with light. Yes guys, this is the wrinkles lesson, but this is the first time that I'm going to be showing you guys, so bear with me. I might stumble over a few things, but we'll be okay. All right, now first things first, I have gone through and I have created a 512 by 512 image and I have taken a I took a guide and pulled it to the center and remember half of uh, two, half of 512 is 256. Just uh, did a 256 light blue and 256 a medium blue on my page so that way you guys can compare and contrast. You don't have to use the colors I'm using. You can use other ones. Please do. I encourage you to do that. Uh, anyway, we're just going to work with just playing with light today. Now, last time we covered paintbrush, we covered the gradient tool, the paint bucket. We covered those and, uh, you know, it's pretty simple stuff. Today we're going to go down into these two tools. Uh, we're going to go into smudge and we're going to go into dodge and burn. Now I've given you guys a link to a site called Earthbound Light and they do a really good job, better than I could have done, describing exactly what the dodge and burn tools do and their history. To make a long story short, because I know some people don't like to go back and read, the history of dodge and burn comes from the dark room and in the dark room what you had were different tools when you were developing uh, photographs from negatives what you had to do was you know you have to shine a particular amount of light onto the photograph to get it to print onto the paper so what they did back in our old school days in the dark room and a lot of people still do this so guys it's not that old school it's just not something you hear about anyway what they did was when they were working with an image you would they would take a tool that's very similar it looks like this big old fat push pin it's a that goes with the dodge tool what it it was was a big handle that they would they would place the pin onto uh the the page where the the photograph was printing and they would hold that so that the light would not shine as much onto the area that they were printing so that way it made the area lighter okay because remember the more light that pours onto a negative the darker it gets so they wanted to prevent that causing a lightning effect by holding that a dodge tool over it so that way it wouldn't get as dark so hence the dodge tool lightens areas in your image now the other one is the burn tool now the burn tool looks like a hand and it's cupped into a small circle now the burn tool what it ha what happened is it's the exact opposite of the dodge they wanted to allow more light but they only wanted it to do it in particular areas so that what they would do is they would cup their hand and just give that little bit of light that would shine through on a particular area and then explo expose that particular portion to the light making it darker so it burns it in or makes it darker so remember dodge lightens burn start burn darkens now when we work on an image with dodge and burn what you have to remember is that it is um, when you're just working with the tools straight onto your image, what's going to happen is that y now notice, let's go back for just a second. Why am I having to go over this so many times to create a burn? Let's look up here in our options panel, uh, our options bar. We have, of course, brush sizes that we can choose from. We also have the range that it covers, which is shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this works when you are working with an image with a lot of different colors in it. If you want to work with just the shadows, then you would choose shadows. If you want to work with the midtones, then you do midtones, and then, of course, highlights. And this goes for both tools, both dodge and burn. And then, of course, you have an exposure. And this lets you know how this determines how much oomph you're really putting into it. Now, say if I was just working, like this is at 13% you don't have a lot coming out and there's a good reason for that is because with dodge and burn if you go crazy it's hard to get out it really is you have to usually scrap it and start over again to 
get it right. So we want to use as little as possible to begin with to just define our shape. Then we get darker and darker and darker. So that way we can always add more. It's harder to do go less. Okay, so remember, let's go in moderation. Let's go gently with this. Anyway, what I'm just doing is holding down my shift key and just uh, just going back and forth with my mouse. I'm using my stylus again. So if it moves quickly, guys, that's because I'm using my stylus. Went a little dark on that one. Oops. Then I'm going to come back here again, and I'm going to just very lightly go in. Not making a whole lot, but I'm holding down my shift key and moving my my mouse back and forth, and this causes a straight line. I know a lot of you guys, ooh, how do you do a straight line? Well, that's how. Okay, now we're going to switch over to the burn to, uh, dodge tool, and notice that my dodge is set a lot lighter. It's at 50%, because with the the lighter shades, when we're playing with light, we really want to remember that when we make wrinkles, if you pick up, like if you're wearing a t-shirt or, or have a, like a, a skirt that you can grab a whole bunch of uh, cloth in one hand, what you're going to notice is that it's going to, you know, if you put it next to the light, what it's going to do is it's going to show darker areas, it's going to show lighter areas, and when you look at wrinkles like that, when you actually concentrate on how the light is playing on the fabric or whatever it is that you're looking at, you know, once you start looking at that, wrinkles come into focus very quickly. Now, I'm just working with some that are, the, my first set are just going to be ones that it looks like it's just folded over and over again, uh, similar to maybe an accordion fold you would see in a napkin or something of that nature. Okay, so when we work with dodge and burn, we are just really working with light. So here we are with the, with the dodge tool, which lightens. I'm going to hold down my shift key again, and I'm just going to go back and forth. Okay, just making a little bit of, and actually we can uh, come up here and make that just a little bit wider. I was working with a 13 diameter. I'm actually going to bump up to a 17 and then come back on the next line. And I'm actually going to make that a little bit wider. And what's nice about working with dodge and burn is that when you're uh, when you're working with these tools, you have a cert, you know you have a lot of flexibility. You can come through and just do a couple of things, or just be random with your brush stroke, and everything mushes together great. Because we're going to come back with the smudge tool, which is right next to the dodge and burn to the left, and you're just going to rub over it. Okay, just rub over the whole thing. Okay, and you're going to pull the paint around, and that's what smudge does is it pulls paint around. But since we are working on our base color layer that's underneath it, what's going to happen is that it's going to pull in also the color that it's on top of. Okay, we, We've used these brush strokes and actually what it's doing is it's working with the base color lightening and darkening it. So when we come through, do something a little like that, you know, we can always come back and add more if we need to. We can always come back and add more. That's the whole thing. You can, you know, you can have trouble pulling it out, but, you know, you can always add a lot more. So I'm just going to come through. Now I'm just going freehand. And I'm going to minimize a little bit of, and I'm really going to pull out where I think the top of the wrinkles should be. <sighs> but as you can see, you just rub over it and all of a sudden it becomes kind of it becomes a lot more detailed and of course how you work with it artistically and you know dodge and burn is probably one of the more artistic tools that you'll use and really this depends on your eye it depends on your your artistic sense of how you want to do that but of course and here's our first set of wrinkles and they came out pretty good i think okay let's zoom in look at it Okay, so that way we know when we do a, a dodge, it makes it lighter. If we come back with a burn, and and when you're working with fabric, you know, go grab a piece of that type of fabric and then crumple it in your hand. See what happens when you have folds and wrinkles, and then come back, smudge, and then work it together. 
and then that way it becomes this wonderful little lump <laughs> and you have the deep shading underneath it the light on top but remember you ha really have to concentrate on where's your light coming from in this case my light is coming from above so and it's actually staying pretty level just a little bit high anyway so you ha really have to keep in mind just the theory behind it I mean you guys know how light works on things and it's just coming through and, and deciding you know what you're gonna do with that now the bad thing about this technique it is totally layer dependent we have just done this on top of our color layer if we try to move it it's not gonna go anywhere if we make a mistake then <clears throat> 9 out of 10 we're probably gonna have to scrap the whole thing so not the most perfect technique in the world but it does work with your base color layer very nicely now like our friends over at um, oh who are they what's their name earthbound light there we go um, earthbound light what they say is that a lot of people are uncomfortable with this type of technique and you know what I don't blame them one bit because I really you know I started out working with dodge and burn because that's what I really did in college is you know doing a lot of dodge and burn really working with the light and the colors and all that other stuff and what I found is that I'm really not comfortable with it when I'm working with textures in there simply because you know when you are working right down on the layer you can't move it if you want to duplicate it and maybe you know do it again like if you're doing a sleeve or if you're doing something on the right side of a shirt and you want to make sure that that's the exact same on the left you know things like that it's you know ooh, you if you're gonna make mirror images it's hard to duplicate that unless you literally copy the layer and move it over but you know a lot of people like to be layer dependent so what we can do is go to layer new layer now when we have a new layer pop up what we can do is change the blending mode and we'll go into blending modes a little later on we can go into overlay now guys this is one of those things pro common sense probably hit you and said overlay oh well it's just gonna lay over the top of it you would be right that's that's absolutely right with overlay it lays over the top what will happen is it'll ask you do you want to fill it with overlay neutral color which is 50 percent gray you would check it and say yes and hit OK now for this technique what we're gonna do is come back with brushes now that was dodge and burn dodge and burn relies purely 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 on you going on to your base color layer and working with it from there okay after you do it there's no going back unless you come over here in the history panel and undo it okay that's the pitfall with dodge and burn but if we do a layer and we have a 50 percent gray in it what we can do is go and work with black and white and what we can do is come in with different brush sizes and of course we worked with brushes last time we have um, our opacity our flow we have the airbrush we have a lot of things we can do but if we come in and do a a little bit of darker color here if we come over with black and then we switch or you can hit the X key on your keyboard to change that then come over at the top now look how much how much starker this is because this is at a hundred percent opacity okay and you're actually editing a layer of gray that's uh, that's overlaying on the top now if we take that off you go you don't see anything because it's an overlay okay then we would just come in with our smudge tool and work with it and change it up a little bit and actually this was a really wide brush and I shouldn't have used such a wide brush but this is where you know as an artist this is where you have to come in and say okay what am I gonna do with this like for me personally I always drag my stuff down to mix it and then I move across it And there we go and when you drag stuff down what'll happen is you'll get a little bit of extra detail from it okay so when we work with something like this it gives you the same same effect okay like for me my uh, the 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 um, the opacity of my brush was a little high you know we can come back and redo it 
with a 36 maybe, you know, with 36 opacity or bring down your opacity a little bit. And what you're going to notice as you work with it, oops, uh, what, when you work with it, it's going to fill in and then you can come back and just do the same thing. Okay. And in this manner, you'll get a lot of great detail. Okay. You'll get some, you'll get it where you play with light efficiently, you know, and that's the whole thing is that learning a technique is one thing, but, you know, getting to be really proficient with it, really learning how to work with it well is a matter of practice. It really is. It's you sitting down and saying, okay, today I am going to master this. And you sit down and you work with it and you bend it to your will. There are so many times I've told you guys that, you know, this is a genie in a bottle. You tell it what you want it to do and then it does it for you. You know, but these techniques, you know, you can always add more. But with with this type of technique, okay, so I'm, I'm going to put in another wrinkle. Just so we have multiple areas that we're doing this in. Um, let's see, let's change over to that. Let's add in a little bit more. Come back. And you know what? You can be as messy as you want to be. You really can. You can be just as messy as you want to be. Let's go in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in a little bit more white because I really want that wrinkle to show really, really well. And look what I'm doing, guys. I'm just coming in, bringing in swashes of color, then coming and just moving over it. So it works really, really well. And you have the illusion of some wrinkles put in. And, you know, it really depends on the contour of what you're working with. I'm like, I'm not going off a template today. I'm just going freehand to show you guys what this is all about. Okay, so we've done, you know, quite a bit of stuff. And notice with my smudge tool, I'm at 50%. If I go up to 100%, look what happens. My paint gets thrown to kingdom come. We don't want that, okay? What we want to do is have a tool that has, you know, if you don't have enough strength, then you can always turn it up. But I'm going to caution you guys, work, start low, work up. Because if you start, you know, if you start, you know, going through there like gangbusters, you're going to make a mess and you're not going to be happy with how it turned out. Okay. So I keep forgetting I'm not working with my dodge and burn, you know. But anyway, it gives you the same effect. But I'm going to show you something, guys. We go to the move tool and guess what happens? We can move this. Now, what's cool, like if you make a whole bunch of t-shirts, okay, if you have one that says, the bar are my friends and they don't like you very much, or the shroomy safari company, or whatever, you know, whatever you put on your shirt, or pixel slinger, or, you know, eat at Ventrilla Cafe, <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, if you have wrinkles that you like, and you want to move it from one texture to another, you can when you use a layer independent um, technique. And notice here, you know, we're still a little dark, so you can always come and smudge more. You know, you can always do a lot with this technique just by moving things around. Okay? So keep that in mind. I mean, we have a layer here where, guess what? We can't do anything with this. Okay? <laughs> it's a honking mess. Okay? Whereas the other one, when we move the layer around, it's no big deal. Oh, by the way, there is, there you go, that's what it looks like. That's what that layer looks like without having, uh, you know, with the overlay, you know, because it literally lays over the top of our image, okay? If we put it below, it wouldn't show up, but that's the layer for, le that's the lesson for layers. We'll go, we'll talk about that another time. But anyway, there's a lot of stuff that you can do just by working with, okay, so we started with dodge and burn. Now we've gone to a 50% gray in an overlay. Now let's go to, let's make another layer. And let's go with just plain black and white. We have our colors. We have black, we have white. Okay, so what I do, I start in. And notice my, my brush is turned down. This is black. And then I come back, and that is white. Okay, because my opacity is turned down. Now if I wanted to turn my opacity all the way up, and then you know what, let's, let's scratch that. Let's, let's go back. And, and what I'm going to do is... Uh, do a control A for select all and then and then hit delete. 
Okay, let's go ahead and turn our brush all the way up to 100%. Okay, so what I'm going to do, come in with my brush, start with my shadows, and start making some shadows. Okay, because that's what I want my wrinkle to look like, so that's the way it is. Okay, I can come back with a smaller brush, I'll go with my 17 again, you know, just adding little pieces and bits. Okay, then what I do, come back through with white, go through and add in our highlights where I want those areas to, to go to. Okay, then I'm just going to come back with my smudge and start smudging. Okay, working those together. Now you're going to go, Sherry, that's a really, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be right. Well, give me some time because what's going to happen as we move these around and start really pulling in our colors together and making them work is that, you know, that's the thing about the smudge tool. When you work with this and you're on an independent layer, you don't ever have to worry about your texture underneath getting messed up. If you are working on a pair of blue jeans, and this is the best example I have ever heard, if you are working with a pair of blue jeans and you have gone through and scanned in some denim fabric and you've gone through a lot of trouble, if you smudge on your fabric, it you're going to ruin the texture. You're going to ruin it completely. So what you're going to want to do is do these different techniques where the layers on top of your original texture. So that way it doesn't foul it. Because when you work with the smudge tool, you know, my, my teacher in college, Yvette, didn't teach the smudge tool because he said it was a nonsense tool. Because what it did was destroy the texture. And for me, it's just like, no, no, even uh, quite to the contrary. When used properly and used with wisdom, you know what? It can do a lot for you. So don't discount it, really. I mean, you have to get in here and you have to practice with these tools. I can't plop it in your lap and say, okay, step one, you do this. Step two, you do that. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to get in here and you have to practice. I know, isn't it amazing? Sherry made a mess at first and now it's turning into some wrinkles. Okay, so I've really worked these in together and so that way I have a, a, some folds and such like that. I have some neat things happening. Okay, and that's just coming, you know, this is just artistic sense. Guys, I, you should see me in real life drawing. I am a mess, you know. So don't, don't look at my stuff and go, oh, but she's good at it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just like you guys, just stumbling through. Okay? It's just that when you play with light, when you play with perspective, and you're looking at all this, you really have to take into account, where is this light coming from? Where is it going? Where do you guys think my light's coming from? My light's coming from the up above for this example. Anyway, okay, so I've worked this in pretty good. There are spots that have gone a little dark and spots I've gone a little bright, but that's okay. They're, they'll all be gorgeous later on. Well, not exactly gorgeous, but you guys will see what I'm talking about. Now, what we do with this particular layer, okay, hang on just a second. That's a little dark for my taste, so I'm going to come in and, oops. Now, that I didn't want to do that. Let's go back in the history panel. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, let's go back, smudge again, work that in, okay, because that's what's nice. Once you get used to your tools and everything like that, we'll have a little bit of a, a high one come up at the very bottom. There, there we go, and work that all in together. You know, and, and I can't stress enough, you know, parallel lines are your friend when you're working with these techniques. Because once you get going with it and you have all this stuff added in, then all of a sudden it just makes a lot more sense. Okay, so work that in. Come over here to the opacity of the layer. What you can do is take it down. You know, if I take it to 33%, I have something very similar to what I have uh, in these areas. So there's another way to make some wrinkles is by just coming through going with black and white then turning down the opacity you can also go through and do your blending layers uh, blending modes and you will find that some of them work really well others do not <laughs> there are some that are just hmm not sure I want to do that 
but go through check through your blending modes and see if there's one that really suits what you're trying to do like there's a really pretty one and it of course works with the layer underneath it so that way your base color is shining through some of them will not be what you want at all but like this is overlay very similar to what we had above and what we have on the side same thing over here except we didn't have the gray that we uh, had underneath okay when we worked with that we worked on a gray layer and worked from there this one we did it on its own okay so two variations of the same kind of theory which is to use black and white to create these things you know you can do a number of things I mean if you want to be bizarre and have wrinkles coming out of nowhere on an iridescent fabric I mean that's a difference you know you can do a lot of things with these uh, with this technique so what I'm going to do turn down the opacity well, let's go to 50% see how that looks yeah there we go at 50% and of course I'm going to come back and tell you that it's mobile you can do a lot with it okay it moves around so let's move that one and let's put it right there okay last technique we're going to talk about and it is very prevalent if somebody tells you that they don't uh, you know oh wrinkles are easy it's probably because they're going to use the technique I'm about to tell you about um, a lot of people use this technique a lot and it's a very good technique to use what it is is it's bevel and emboss it's a layer style and what you can do is go to layer and then do um, where because I usually go from my uh, my panel right down here there's a little button which just looks like it has a little F in it if you click on it you can go straight to bevel and emboss and it's gonna open up your layer style okay what we have is bevel and emboss now bevel and emboss is a lot of fun like right now we don't have a really big one but we'll turn it on on the layer and then we'll come through with our brush do any color you'd like you do blue green or rock marine it won't matter and what I'm going to do is going to start filling in okay go exactly where I want my wrinkles to go let's see I'll even go with a little bit bigger brush okay and what I'll do is start pulling in some wrinkles okay so what I'm gonna do take the fill now on your layers panel take your fill take it to zero okay so now well look at there it already makes sure that it has the the coloring the the highlights and the shadows let's come in with our our smudge tool same thing guys same thing now but this one depends on the settings you have done for the bevel and emboss this is not artistic you know this is not artistic this is more you know working with an actual tool what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those a little bit just to you know just to make them a lot more fun okay come over here and we're just moving paint around guys all this is is paint it just has a layer style on top of it for the bevel and emboss to make it a little bit different okay now okay so I've done some smudging and stuff like that and this one's you know it's like I'm like really messy but when you come back and you're working with this and you just double click on your layer style what you can do is increase the size and you know you can soften up what you're looking at you can also change the colors of the highlights and the shadows okay and so if we wanted to do that what we could do is we could actually turn up our shadows or turn down our highlights and such like that so what we do you know you can mess with the size of them uh, you can even tell it to do different things I mean if you want them to go into your fabric if you want them to you know kind of stay on top it's up to you you know this is just a really great example of what you can do with it oh there we go and you know you can work with it in different ways to make it more what you want less of what you want you know it all depends on the layer style I, I mean just depends on what you want to do with the layer now if I come through do a control a which selects all on that layer and then hit delete if I come back through now that I've got my settings set 
and I come through with my brush, guess what? I can make wrinkles until my heart's content and it works just fine. Okay, Very similar technique. It's just, you know, when you're working with it, hey, you know what, that's not a very good set. Let's do it again. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing about it. It's on a layer. It's not dependent on what you want to do. So let's go through and just do some wrinkles. Now, here's where it gets tough with bevel and emboss, is that you have to make sure that your wrinkles are spaced. Because if you don't, the bevels will run together. Okay? So if we're working and we're just creating these little wrinkles and such, we can always go back with our smudge tool. I'm going to go with a wider smudge tool since I've gone with a wider brush. Okay, what we can do is, you know, smudge them together. We'll still get our, you know, we'll still get a little bit of separation. But you know how sometimes I go up and down and to, to mix my color, we don't want to do that on this technique because it'll just mush together and you'll have one big bevel and that's not going to work right. So what you can do is just pull them a little bit. You know, you can always pull your paint and your and bevel and emboss will do the work for you, you know, putting together the shade and the highlight, the the shadows and the highlights and everything like that. So that way you can come through with more wrinkles. And of course, guess what? Layer independent. You can come over here and notice that, huh, that's not bad. That's not a bad wrinkle at all. But, you know, this is just something for you guys to think about. Is that, okay, so our first one, guess what? It was right here, right on the layer. Bevel and emboss. Okay, let me use my type tool. I'll come in here and mark these for you guys. When we do... Okay, let me move these guys around. <laughs> and this is what I love so much about these techniques, is that there are some, you can move them around and it's no big deal. Okay, this first one up here, let me get out my type tool. Okay, this one up here, wow, that is a big font. Jeez, what was I working on? Okay. <laughs> okay, this is Bevelin and Boss. Okay. It's layer dependent. Okay. It's layer dependent. All right. Very bevel and emboss. It's layer dependent. Then on the next one, what did we do? We did a 50% fill with 50% uh, gray fill on an overlay setting. Okay. So this one. Hang on just a second. Okay. All right, so this one was a uh, uh, gray, uh, sorry, a 50% gray fill. Okay, it is layer independent. Okay. Then the next one, what do we do on this guy right down here? Oops, we forgot something. Layer gray fill, 50% independent. It's layer independent, and it is an overlay. Um, yeah, overlay in your um, layer, um, your blending mode. Okay, that's this guy. Down here, we just did, did straight black and white. It's just straight black and white. This is and white. And we took the opacity. We lowered the opacity. Okay. And then right over here, we did bevel and emboss. Okay. So that way you have learned four different techniques for creating a wrinkle. Okay. Oh, it's not Bevelin and Boss up there. That's Dodge and Burn. I'm such a dodo. Sorry. Dodge and Burn. Hey guys, it's my birthday. Cut me some. 
back today. <laughs> My brain's not working right tonight. Okay, there we go. Dodge and burns, layer dependent. Then below it, bevelin and boss, which is layer independent. These three guys are layer independent, like this fella right here. Layer independent as is the bevelin emboss because when we go to bevelin emboss and well hi I want to edit the type layer oh can you please give me a break machine oh it's deciding to freak out okay there we go bevelin emboss is just layer independent Hey, you can't ever say that I don't teach like I teach in a real classroom. Hey, I make mistakes. I am not perfect. Okay, so there we go. And all of these guys, you know, remember, you kind of want to uh, make sure you layer everything. This is the 50% gray. And then, of course, we have black and white. You know, be in a habit of labeling your layers. Okay, this is Bevelin and Boss. You know, each of these techniques, you know, when you work with bevel and emboss, you can do something different with brush size. I mean, if you, like, I was using a honking huge brush, so that's a 45. If I come through with a 9, okay, if I come through with a 9 pixel brush, and I tell it, okay, do this, and then do this, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you'll be able to do, you know, just by working with a smaller brush for smaller details. Okay, these things, you know, you've got to practice with them. I can tell you till the cows come home, but until you go and until you practice, you know, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you. So go through, try all three techniques, you know, dodge and burn. You know, when you work with them, make sure you check your exposures, okay? Check your exposure because that's how much you, you are laying down. Remember, you can always add more getting it out or you know going less <laughs> is a lot is very difficult <laughs> if you are not thinking ahead of time you know it's like okay I've swashed all this paint on it oh I got it too dark how do I get it out um, that's called erase and starting over again so guys when you're working with this we have Bella and Boss, Dodge and Burn, 50% gray fill with overlay blending mode, and black and white with lowered, uh, lowered opacity, which is layer independent. So each one is has its own strengths and weaknesses. You know, Dodge and Burn and the black and white and the 50% the gray fill though uh, with the overlay blending mode, those are very artistic. That is you pushing paint around with your smudge tool. And remember, when working with your smudge tool, be careful with your strength. Keep it down. Don't, guys, just do this for me. Start at 50% or lower. Do not go above 50%. Don't go above 50%, 50% when you are working with the strength of your smudge. Because if you had any type of anything on there and you went through with your smudge tool if you were working with denim fabric and you are laying down your wrinkles with dodge and burn and you go through and you smudge you are going to ruin your denim okay denim is just a, a a example but if you're say working with some type of pattern that you have scanned and brought into your texture you're going to ruin it if you go with smudge on that layer with your fabric Go with the more uh, layer independent types like the 50% gray fill or the black and white. Okay, just take my word for it. The ability to move things around, or maybe you don't like where you've put it, you'd like to move it over. It's a lot easier to do it by using your move tool rather than having to go back and smudge it over because the more you put into it, it's kind of like a catch-22. You can work with smudge and you'll be working with your wrinkles and they'll come out really great, but then you'll decide to move it and if you're moving it with the smudge, odds are you're going to botch it. I know that that's how it works for me and I've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, be conservative. 
when you start with the these techniques be conservative you know start small work your way big you know just do what I did start with a 512 by 512 canvas fill it and then work with it see what kind of wrinkles you can make anyway uh, that's it for this week um, Otherwise than that, guys, uh, have a good time with this. You know, last two times that we've met, we've had a good time getting paint all over us. So go have fun and have, have a good time painting. Okay, I'll see you next week. And this was Lesson 4. See you next time. Bye.